Okay, uh, looking at page 77, 78, what kind of questions might you have come up with? I have a question of eight. Ooh. Eight. Yes. That's what I will hit first, then. Number eight. Number eight. Page 77, 78, problem number eight. Hey, thanks for asking for that one. That's a good one. I don't like you in the first place. So Okay, so let's just read the instructions, see what they have said. Use all that you know to graph each quadratic function, choosing the best method to create an accurate graph. Be sure to include the vertex and four additional points. Graphing the axis or line of symmetry is suggested. Okay, uh, problem number eight. This is kind of set up for us to uh, let's see graph cohesion. This is kind of set up for us to graph it as the intercepts. So this right here is going to say that, hey, it crosses right here at 0, 0. Oh, OK. That's the y-intercept as well. Where does this one say the plot <coughs> point? Almost. Remember, it's opposite. Oh, positive. Four. Positive one, right? So does everybody feel good about those so far? Does this parabola open up or down? What would dictate that? Down. 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 It's definitely <laughs> opening down because this negative right here means that's going to go down. OK. So let's figure out what's halfway between 0 and 4. We'll come in here. Oh, it looks like 2. So x, x equals 2 is my axis of symmetry. And they only suggested that we do it, so I'll, I'll go ahead and do it anyhow. And so that means that my x component of my vertex is going to be at 2 comma something. OK? How do I find the something? Plug it in. So we have to remember that negative is still there. So I'm going to get negative 2 and then 2 minus 4. So I get negative 2 times negative 2. That's positive 4. So at 2 comma 4, I'm going to have my vertex. And this will pattern graph as right one, down one, left one, down one, right one, down three, left one, down three. Sweet. So there is my parabola. So when it's in factored form, it makes it really easy to find the vertex, or where it crosses the x axis. Huh. What else on that homework? Yeah. Two to ten. Ten? Yeah, boy. Over ten. Okay. This is not in factored form. This is or intercept form. This is actually in standard form. Okay? So this right now is listed in standard form. So that tells me my A value is 1, my B value is negative 4, and my C value is negative 8. So there's all kinds of information that will give us right there. Uh, let's put a graph up there. Okay. So if it's in standard form, we can go ahead and get my axis of symmetry which is x equals negative b over 2a. And so I get negative negative 4 over 2 times 1. Does that make sense? So everyone see why there's both negatives there? And negative with a repeating negative gives us a positive. So that's going to give me what, 4 over 2, which that's going to reduce to x equals 2. OK. So somewhere up or down this axis symmetry, we're going to have a vertex. Let's find the rest of the vertex. So I get 2 comma something. How do I get the something? Plug in 2. So I'm going to plug 2 in for all the x values. So that's an x value right there. So I'm going to get uh, 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 8. Let's do the math. 2 squared is 4. 
Negative 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. All right, so far, minus 8. Ooh, let's see. That's going to give me negative 4 minus 8. Ooh, negative 12? Really? Okay. Okay, so let's, let's erase my axis of symmetry. We're going to change the size of my graph here. That should work. All right, so at uh, 2 negative 12, 2 negative 12, which is down here, we're counting by twos on each of ours. We're right there. Is that okay so far? Did this parabola open up or down? Up, okay. So my pattern graph is going to work just fine with the right one, up one, left one, up one. But realize I'm counting by two, so we're going to go right one, up one, so that's like right there. And left one up one, that's like right there. Okay, so if I keep going with that, I'm gonna go uh, from here, I'm gonna go right one up three, so that's one, two, three. One, two, three. That seems to be enough to graph. By the pattern graph, you might not have shown us that that worked. Let's see, would this have factored? Would this factor to x? No, it's not going to factor. It's not going to factor. So it does cross the x-axis, so they're not complex. It's just we can't see them right, right off real easily. It didn't factor. They're actually called um, irrational roots because they're, it does cross the x-axis, but we don't know exactly what. That's how we do number 10. What else would you like to take a look at? Can we do two? Two? Sure. Okay, two, it's in factored form, okay? Which I have y equals x minus six, x minus two. Is that right? So this is going to tell us where it's crossing the x-axis. Okay, so looks like we can do that okay on this grid. So what is this going to give me for where it crosses the x-axis? Six. six, good. So I got positive six there. What is this one going to give me? Two. Two? Does everyone feel comfortable with why those happen? Remember, if it's grouped, it's always going to be opposite, okay? And so let's come into the middle. So I'm going to come in once, I get to three, five. Come in one more, I get to four. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 4. So somewhere up or down this, this line is going to be our vertex. So find the vertex. I'm going to plug 4 back into the original. So I'm going to get uh, 4 minus 6 and 4 minus 2. Is that okay? Let's see. That's negative 2, right? That's positive 2. Oh, good. I get 4 comma 4. Wait, wait, wait. I'm off. Negative 4, right? So that should give me a negative 4. Negative 4 is down here. My pattern graph, I go right one up one, left one up one. If I go right one up three, awesome. Yeah, buddy. You'd already started it, right? Cool. Oh, so you need a little bit of So, I mean, whatever you, I'll regrade that so it's work on that. Yeah. And then come up front and I'll get you the other part when you're done with the first. Sure. And you, you can grab the graphing calculator if you need one. Okay, thank you. Yeah, buddy. All right. What do y'all think? So these, these okay? How'd you get four? How much? How'd you get four? The original four? Because I knew that it crossed here and here. So I could do one of two things. I can go 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Or I can say, let's go halfway. So I go 2 in, I go 2 in, I get to the 4. Yeah. So if it was like 1 in 4, then you go 1 in for each, then what would the vertex be? 2.5. It's kind of decimal. I'll try not to give you those on like the quiz, but every now and then we'll sneak one in on the homework. Any others you want to take a look at from uh, 
One more. We're good. All right. If you would, make sure your name is on your assignment and hand them in. If you're handing other things in, make sure your name's on those as well. <coughs> Excuse me. short on notes today but I want to go slow with it our notes are one front that's it <coughs> but I want to make sure that you have enough time to ask questions and then you jot down your thoughts and ideas Short and sweet. <laughs> Short and sweet. All right. So I got to make up, uh, let's see, math, graph, cohesion. Fair enough. Should be enough, I think. Yep. Okay. Uh, so this first one looks like we have a vertex at. Four, negative eight, negative four, negative eight. And then Okay, so this is our given quadratic. So Let's say you are on quiz day, told to, hey, I need you to find the equation to this. Okay, so we have a couple of different equations we've done. We have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Then we have the x plus x plus, or it could be x minus and x plus, or it doesn't matter. And then we also have this one. So we have standard form, which is just your general form of how you would see these. Uh, we also have, if they're in factored form, or we have the vertex form. Well, I'm kind of having a hard time looking at the, uh, the standard form, the very top one, and getting anything out of it. Agreed? So we might want to even look at this one. We could look at the second one. So let's look at this for a sec. Can I tell where this crosses the x-axis? You think? There's points there, right? So I could probably say, well, I have a, I have a 2 and I have a six. I don't have an A value that I know in this case. So that's kind of works for us right now. Do you agree? Hmm. But I don't know if this would be the best because I, I can't see the A value right off the top of my head. So let's think about the last one. Can, can I see the vertex there? Can I see if it pattern graphs? Does it go right one and up how many? Two. two. Good. So that's going to tell us that our A value is two. Oh, wait. I just found the A value. So maybe I could plug this 
a value of 2 into right there. Maybe, maybe that works. Maybe. I don't know, though. And then my vertex showed us that it was negative 4, negative 8, I believe. Do you agree with that? So then I have a equals 2. If I plug it in, I have to change the sign. So that's the x value, which is the h value. So I have to change the sign. So that's plus 4 quantity squared. And then I keep the sign with the k, which is the y value. So that's my equation. But could this also be my equation? What do you think? Any ideas? Well, how could it be your equation if it's two slopes? Because wouldn't that be wouldn't that be the um, vertex? So the two six I got because that's where it crossed the x axis. So it's in factored form. So let's let me go down the screen a little bit and let's take what we know. So I know I have y equals maybe I think this one might work. Okay, I'm not sure yet. Because do we all agree the a value is 2? Is there anybody who's like, I, I don't realize how it goes over 1, up 2? That's where we get the 2 from. And then we also have this one. And I, I want to try and figure out if these could be the same thing. But I'm not quite sure. Because they sure do look a lot different than each other when you look at them. Do you agree? So any ideas how we might? Be able to determine if they're the same? Thoughts? Anything? Could I uh, double distribute or FOIL and then distribute the two on the first one? I'm just trying to put it, I guess if I did that, it would put me in standard form. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. So let's just see what happens here. So I want to see if these two things are the same. So let's let's multiply these. So I have this times this, this times this, this times this, this times this, and then it's all times that 2. So I get x squared plus 2x plus 6x plus 12. Combine like terms. And then let's distribute the 2. So now I converted, I converted my factored form to standard form. Is that okay? Can I make my vertex form go into standard form as well? How many x plus fours am I dealing with up here? Two. Two. So do you agree? I have this. Those about the same thing. And then if I double distribute on this one, so if I do here, 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 I'm going to get uh, 2 x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16 minus 8. Is that okay so far? Yeah. So in the green, that's, is that vertex form? This is vertex form, yeah. Okay, and then did you just make it into? Yeah, I'm converting it. I'm trying to put it back into standard form. Okay. Trying to at least. All right, so let's see. I have two. Let's combine like terms. X squared plus 8x plus 16. And then I have to remember minus 8. Is that okay? If I want to get rid of the parentheses, I can distribute the 2 over the part in the parentheses. So that's going to give me y equals 2x squared plus 16x plus 32 minus 8. And I have 32 subtract 8. What's 32 subtract 8? How much? 24. 24. Yeah. So I ask you, my friends, is this and this the same? So I have three different versions of that. So y equals 2x squared plus 16x plus 24 is standard form. My factored form of that is y equals 2 quantity or parenthesis x plus 2 
close parenthesis, open parenthesis, x plus 6, close parenthesis. Or I could have y equals, in vertex form, y equals 2, parenthesis, x plus 4, quantity squared, minus 8. And they all do indeed yield to the same equation. So which is the best way to do it? I would say some of, some of you are going to see the one on the left, some of you are going to see the one on the right. Are you broken if you see one versus the other? No. Different ways to think about these. Wrong. What do you think? Is this appropriate? I think so. Questions on this? All right, I want to try the second equation, but I want you all to guide me through it. So let me get this graph up here. Uh, that should work. It looks like I have a vertex at 3, 4. Does that look right? And then he goes right one. Left one. Actually, we actually have that value as well. Ooh, so we go that. Okay, so talk to me. Give me some features on the graph that's given that we know. Roots, roots. why do you know, how do you know the roots? Yeah, you see a dot happening on the x-axis, right? So we had, and we see a y-intercept. Good. Okay, so so let's label a few things that we know. So they told me, I know that because we've seen this a few times that zero comma c is how we find the y-intercept. So this is zero comma negative five. Agree. So what does my c value have to equal no matter what? Negative five. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, I have a root here, so that's the point one comma zero, and I have a root here, and that root there is at five comma zero. I know my vertex. Do I have enough information to know my a value? Yes. What do you think it is? Close. Why is it negative one and not positive one? This graph's going down. So my A value, I'm going to go right one, down one. So I have to have a negative A value. Okay, so let's, let's put our equations back up. Okay, so this one is standard form. This one is factored form. And this one is vertex form. So we have three equations that find all the same thing. So let's underline in the first one we know. I know an A value, agree? You agree with that? And I know a C value, right? So I could rewrite this one as y equals negative 1x squared plus bx minus 5. Still, I have a B unknown. Do you agree? So does that seem like the best of them to use? Yes or no? <clears throat> nah, so we might have to move past standard form. Okay. Um, I do know the A value is negative 1. And then I have x. How would I undo that point? Where is it here? Minus 1. Awesome. What is this point? Minus 5. Hey, that looks pretty good. Agree? So I think that's a definite check mark. Let's see if we can use the vertex form. Okay, I know I have the negative 1, x. What's my h value? 
Like when I've heard text. Three. Remember, H, K, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. In alphabetical order. H, K is alphabetical. So is X, Y. Okay, so X goes with H, K, Y goes with K. So I have X, what goes here? Minus three, remember this group, it's gonna be opposite of what it had been given. And what's my K value? Plus four. So I think I have, I think I have two very legitimate equations that both have just x and y left in them. Agree? Both have x and y left in them. The reason I can't use that top one is I do have x and y. I agree with you. But I also have a b that's kind of an unknown term. Can I convert either or both of those into standard form? If so, how would I do it? Do what? Foil. So there's no reason to foil both of them. Because we just proved on the last graph that you could you know, go through the foiling process and get the exact same thing. So let's just pick one or the other to do. I don't care which one you pick. Uh, let's get pen. Let's get, a, let's get that bluish color. So maybe I'd take this one. So I'm going to get, nope, that's not the one I wanted. Maybe. Maybe. I'll take this one. Let's foil it out. So I got that negative one out there. And then if I go here, 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 so I get x squared minus 5x. Here, 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 minus 1x plus 5. Do I have like terms here? Sure. So y equals negative 1, x squared minus 6x plus 5. What's the last step that I should do on this problem to get it in the standard form? What's my last step? Huh? Distribute the negative 1. Sure. Distribute negative 1. So I get negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. Dude, I was able to do that, and guess what value I just found now? The b value. Remember up above, I didn't know what the b value was? Now I was able to discover that the B value happens to be 6. So those three forms are important. So flip your page over, because it's blank on the back side, and let's just put the things we know. So y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is called standard form. So values that we could know, we, we can find A and C a lot of the time. But B gets goofy on us. Agreed? We can find A and C, but sometimes B is harder to find on us. OK? We also have factored form. And this works best if we can find the roots and the pattern graph. So knowing that, we should be able to find the vertex as well, OK? Because you use the vertex to figure out the pattern graph. And then we have this one. And this works best when we know the vertex and can see the pattern graph. So in this one we have to remember, if I have a vertex that's x comma y, that means that my vertex goes to h comma k. And when we plug in and plug back into parentheses, we have to flip flop our values.
So that's kind of the summation of everything. Yeah. Does that say vertex and we can't see pattern graph? Yeah, we can see the pattern graph. So we'd have to have a point to the right and the left that we'd be able to count up from it. That's how we find the A value. And then wait, which form which form is not in? Which one? The last one. Oh, this is vertex form. Wait, but I thought the one above it was. That's vertex. factored form. So this is called vertex form. Oh, okay. So we'll do that. Uh, let's go here. And this vertex form is this one. Good enough. Uh, cover that one. And then we have this one, which is factored form. This one, we definitely need to have the roots for it, right? And then the last one is standard form. Make sense? Cool? Content? All right, let's have us focus on page 79 and page 80. You can get a start on it if you'd like. You got? I'll run the desk. Put on top of the other purple. 